as you are finding your place, as you are looking up, I welcome you. I welcome you to worship. I welcome those who join us online. Welcome and good morning, Terry, who is coming in to the Lord's house this day. Uh, I kid you not, I had a dream twice this week. Twice this week I awakened in the morning thinking it was Sunday morning. And for a pastor, that, is, that can be frightful sometimes. Uh, if, you're, if you're prepared, that's one thing. If you're not, then that is, you're really, really frightful. But it's also from a joyful standpoint, I'm thinking, gosh, it's Wednesday. Got a few more days. I did it again yesterday morning. It was a Saturday morning. Woke up rubbing the eyes and thinking, oh, today is Sunday. No. I uh, still have a day, but today is the day. You're here, so I know I have the right day. I am, I am so joyful to see you, to welcome you as, as persons are coming in, preparing. Uh, I want to say online what a joy it is uh, to, to yesterday be in the parade. I saw many of your faces. I had a question asked three times in the parade. And I want just to let everybody know, and I want those uh, even listening online, watching us online, the question was, are you all taking your steeple down? <laughs> Literally, that, that's what they asked. They said, oh, please, please tell me. I was like, no, no, far from that. We are refurbishing, repairing uh, for many, many more years a beacon of the valley. I cannot tell you the number of times you're on the interstate and you look to your right or to your left and see right through that opening the steeple. So we are not taking or removing the steeple. It's part of the renovation that you understand. And that if anybody wants to help, there, there's going to be an article in the paper. P.O. Box 356 uh, is anybody in the community or anybody that has connection we are repairing God's house for many many more years and they the roofers the people working on it have given good um, feedback and they say that it is very structurally sound and it has now been sealed over uh, so that no water is uh, able to get in praise be to God right Let's give the Lord a round of applause. <laughs> then we come in of looking inside. This place is ready to sing, and it's going to sing today with your voices, but the presence and the power of the Lord is in this place, and we are delighted. We're delighted that you're here today. I hope that you're expecting. I uh, want to welcome our, our special guest. Uh, it's so good to have Brian Brian and Ron are coming a little bit later, but I also, after our prayer, we welcome this morning some of the students from Montreat. They're lighting our Advent candle today, the candle of peace. So we welcome some of our students as well. We're joyful. Let's bow our heads for our prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you for the gift, the gift of your presence. For the time to be together. For the plans, for the word that you have for each one of us. Lord, I pray that we might never be the same. Because we are lifting high your holy name. And we are welcoming you to our time, to our worship. We offer this in the joyful expectant name of Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. This morning, will you make welcome uh, to light the candle, Theana Gallus and Maddox Pleasance, uh, way up the road from Montreat College. Ladies, you are welcome. We hear you joyfully and prayerfully this day. After they light the candle, the candles, we sing, we praise to the glory of the Lord. When was the last time that your world was turned upside down? 
If you think about the event in occasion, I think that you would agree that it pales when you compare it to the news that Mary received from the angel Gabriel. Mary, we know, felt many things, but in the end, she trusted God. Her devotion led her to offer the words recorded in the first chapter of Luke's gospel, beginning with verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Today we light the candle of peace, knowing that Jesus alone can bring peace to our hearts and also to our world. We will read John 14, 25 through 27. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. We, we light this candle as a symbol of the peace that Jesus has given to us, a peace that passes all understanding. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this beautiful season and the meaning that this beautiful season brings and for this opportunity that we have to gather together and celebrate and worship the greatest gift that was ever given. And Lord, as there is so much hustle and bustle around us, I pray that you would help us to step back and remember the peace that you give us in this season and just to rest in the joy and the wonder and the magic of the Christmas season. Amen. Thank you. 
Reading from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 35, will you hear prayerfully the reading of God's word? Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Giving us our history in your your word but father um, this season help us to truly experience the baby Jesus the journey to the manger the peace that is offered through this sweet baby through this sweet baby that will grow to be a man and give the ultimate sacrifice for us but father right now let us just dwell in the moment, listening for the cries, listening for the rejoicing of Mary, the trust of Joseph, all your plans that came together for this one event to give us peace, hope, joy, and love. Amen. Stand again and sing Silent Night.
is with us. We just are thankful for all the ways that you bless us. We pray that today's service will be to your glory and that we lift up your name on high. Thank you for the gifts and the offerings, and we ask that you will bless them to your, uh, your kingdom. Thank you for loving us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated.
love that will not let me go. That, that was incredible for the people of Isaiah's time to hear those words. The prophet delivered a word that with something like this, you're going to leave your hometown, you're going to leave your land, it's going to be destroyed. You're going to be taken captive. You're going to live and be ruled over by people that you do not know, that do not care anything about you. 
But lo, says the Lord, I am your God. And in the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, we, we see these words. The words of hope. Words of peace. Here is your God. Isaiah writes, here is your God. Strengthen the weak knees. Say to the feeble heart, He will come. Peace. Peace be with you. The angel visited Mary. Peace. The people of Isaiah's time, Mary and our time, we long for peace. Peace. Living in a way that we know the peace. Living in a way that we know the presence of the Lord. Listening. Listening again. Being present, showing up. Don't say, I'm so busy. We must say that all of us find time to do what we want to do. To be in the presence. To be in the presence of the Lord. Listen and listening again and it's receiving the peace. Peace. I know right now with, with this story, I'm, I'm going to get notes and you're, you're wonderful. You're wonderful to respond almost instantaneously with the sermon, email and, and text every week. And, and I love that and I'm grateful for that. You are such a responsive, even, even from those who are joining us online. But you remember cruise ship guy last week that I talked to you about that fell over? Fell over and treaded water 15 hours? Well, we, 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 we got more of a story this week, didn't we? And, and this is where the letters are going to go. You, you spent two weeks talking about this guy. But did you hear what he said to the Coast Guard when they came to get him? These are, these are classic words. You, you can't make this up. I, I just want to warn you, I don't have any clothes on. Someone shows up and you're telling them, I don't have any clothes on? That's, that's the same with us. When we're in the presence of the Lord, He sees us, He sees not what we have, not what we pretend to be or what we want to be, or what we long to be, or what we're striving to be. He sees us as we are without clothes. He sees us as His. And He says to us, peace. I want to be in relationship with you. Peace, peace. In verse 8 of Isaiah 35, it says a highway shall be there. And we, we think of a highway, six, twelve lanes, busy, busy. Uh, all the preparations of the guardrails and all the things that you need. And in Isaiah's time, it was more like a path. That when the rain wasn't there and in the raining season, just rocky path. A highway shall be there and there will be a place that I can go to my people and my people can come to me and they will know peace. They will know peace. We think of peace, the absence of conflict when things are, when things are as we think they should be, when things are working out, when there's money. But peace is action... It's a state of inner tranquility. A highway shall be there, a place shall be there, a relationship shall be there, a wholeness and completeness. This is what I need. This is all that I need. Say to those who are fearful, say to those who are worried, say to those who are struggling, your Lord is here. He's here. 
He's present with you. Not, not to give you rainbow and fuzzy feelings and, and to say everything's got to be okay, but He walks with you through the suffering. He walks with you through the challenges. He says, let me give this to you, my presence, my peace. Peace. I had this week, I had this huge honor this week of, of talking to a Vietnam veteran. He, he had been listening and, and watching the services of this church. He and I made the connection when we were in Haywood County, and, and he, he called me up and he said, I, I need to talk to you. And, and what a story he has. And we were spending time together, and he said, you know... I'm having flashbacks right now. I'm thinking about uh, when I was a POW. I was in Vietnam, and they took everything from me. They took my food. They took everything that I owned. They took my dignity. Everywhere, death, death, despair, hopelessness, death called in every direction. But this is what I need to tell you. And this is, this is what I want you to hear. Preacher, I want, you to, I want you to know that they could never take the peace of Christ. They could not take it. Nor would I give it. But they could not take the peace of Christ because I knew, I knew that He was there with me. And I've been having some difficulty. But I wanted you to hear these words, and I needed to hear these words said out loud to a friend. I celebrate the peace and presence of Christ, not only 40-plus not only years ago, but right at this very moment. Peace. Peace. Maddox, in her scripture this morning, did you hear what she said of Jesus saying in John 14, 27? My peace I leave with you. Leave with you. My peace I leave. A few weeks ago we were working here at the church and and my apologies to Sandra or, or some of the ladies downstairs. Uh, we, we were all we were all thirsting. We were we were we needed a drink of drink of water. We looked in the the church refrigerators, nothing there, but we did find a juice box. And two of us shared a juice box. I squirted it in my, my mouth and then I handed it to them. And they said, you know, this is good. I'm sure we probably took one of the children's, but the kiwi apple or whatever it was, I mean, it's glorious. Jesus said, I leave my peace with you. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. I don't, I don't have strings attached. I don't have expectations. I simply give this and leave this to you because I love you. My peace I give to you. You can't buy it. You can't fund it. You can't earn it. You can't be super follower of Jesus. There are no qualifications just to receive peace, my presence, my sense, my power. Complete. And those watching online, this is a this is a glorious time to celebrate all the symbols of the faith. 
Deb Roberts is here today, and it, it's a joy because she and Bobby and Jamie and, and, and many others were, were behind all of this beauty. But I learned something from Donna Poplin, and Donna right, right now is with her family. She may be watching online. Hello, Donna. From, she's watching from Disney World. She's in Florida with her family. But Donna told me something about a tree. I've heard about the, you know, you put an aspirin in there and a live tree, uh, live tree. Of course, it's not live anymore, is it? But you put an aspirin in there and it, it supposedly will, will keep uh, wicking up the water. It'll say green. And Donna told me something that I never heard and it seems to be working. She said, when you put the tree in the stand, put some scalding hot water from the coffee machine, put it in there. And it'll open up the sap and it'll keep drawing, it'll keep drawing up. And it seems to really be working because we're running Tony to death, uh, putting water in the tree, but to keep, to keep drawing the water. Something that is dead to prolong the life. At least it will appear and all the needles will not fall off. It'll, it'll appear that, that it's still wicking, it's still taking, it's still taking the water. But the truth of this is the tree has been cut from its life source. And it's going to die. There is a message in there from you and I. If we are cut, if we take ourselves from the life source, the, the power, the life, the energy, the love, the hope of Jesus Christ, as Paul writes, we of all people are to be pitied. But the source, the source of being alive, the source of peace is the gift of given from that little bitty screaming baby. You know, I, we, we've had in this church in the last few weeks, we've had some new arrivals and, and praise, praise be to the Lord. But early on, early on, a child knows how to shatter the peace and tranquility, right? Right? And they'll scream and because they're hungry. What would it be? What would it be on this day, right now, that we would be so hungry to take in the presence, to receive the gift? My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Oh yeah, yeah, the world, your life, yeah. It's, it's not all shiny, but you have someone. You have someone that's right there with you. That's offering that has a love that will not let you go and a peace thanks be to God let's pray together oh Lord I thank you for this day I thank you for the reminder that there's a highway, there's your presence. Wherever and however we find ourselves, Lord, you're there. May we today receive, may we today discover, may we today release whatever we're holding, whatever we are carrying. 
May we look into your eyes. May we hear the cries of Emmanuel. May we know peace. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Today we are going to respond. Love this. Go tell it. Go tell it on the mountain. We're surrounded. Let's tell it where we are. Let's tell it how we are. That Jesus Christ is born. It may be to join this church. It may be to begin a new chapter. It may simply be to, to pray at the altar. You're invited. And those watching online, if, if there's a thing that I can do to share and to show you Christ, honor of all honors. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is here. Let's sing.